one of the challenges in phaco surgery is to handle a brown black cataract and that too when it is to be followed by a premium IUL like the Vivity Toric IUL and you can't afford to make mistakes. This is the cataract which is the challenge and my tool is a Centurion FACO machine with a balanced tip and a long and short chopper. The long tip is 1.6 millimeters, the short tip is 1.35 millimeters and with this I am going to handle this nasty black cataract. So first I have to mark the axis which is at 5 degrees and this is being marked by a digital axis marker and I am confirming the axis with a gentian violet mark. the side ports staining the anterior capsule because the visibility is not good the main incision and making a rexus which is a little larger than the normal size rexus so if my normal size rexus is 5 millimeters this would be about 5.5 millimeters hydro dissection rotation of the nucleus and hydro delineation along with this rotation movement These are my parameters. So I am on to the longitudinal FACO, no torsional FACO, IOP at 60, vacuum at 500, aspiration flow rate at 42. And I start with a special maneuver that means I am making a small groove extending from the mid periphery to the center so that in the center I can bury my phaco tip in the substance of the nucleus and this long chopper is at the edge of the rexis and it goes deep into the substance of the nucleus pull it towards the phaco tip and then the separation forces make a clean cut Notice again, buried the tip in the substance of the nucleus, the chopper, the long chopper, 1.6 millimeter chopper sinks into the substance of the nucleus, is drawn towards the phaco tip and the separation forces make a clear cut in the nucleus, in this hard nucleus. Now this is where you need a longitudinal phaco. The longitudinal phaco is only moving to and fro and not side to side as in a torsional phaco. Here you only need a to and fro movement, a longitudinal phaco because that will bury into the substance of the nucleus. A torsional or side to side phaco will open up the tunnel and so the grip on the nucleus will be less. A longitudinal phaco is just going to bury straight into the tip, straight into the nucleus and once I reach the edge, then I bring my foot paddle 2 into position and at the height of foot paddle 2, I have the maximum purchase or the maximum hold on the nucleus. And at this point, I am not in foot paddle 3. And I am holding into the highest position of foot pedal to separate the nuclei pieces. Now I would you would see me again going into foot pedal 3 and you can see on the top right corner the phaco energy is working 
and the CD has become 11.42. I now take out the endonucleus and then I come to the pieces. Now the first piece is a little difficult to take out. So I take it out in the longitudinal phaco where I need a strong grip and then I switch over to torsional phaco for the rest of the emulsification. These are the parameters of quadrant removal and now I am only in the torsional phaco mode with no longitudinal phaco and the IP now kicks in and IP is when the tip gets occluded it pushes the nuclear piece away with a longitudinal stroke and it kind of moves around and comes back to the phaco tip so that the emulsification becomes easier. Now the torsional phaco is at work and I hold each piece, bring it to the center in the pupillary plane and then emulsify it. So again, when I do this, I hold the nucleus in foot pedal 2 position, bring it to the center and then in foot paddle 3 position my emulsification begins and a torsional works like magic. You can see the way this hard nucleus is getting emulsified with the side to side movement of the phaco tip which is specially enhanced in case of a balanced tip which gives a very high amplitude of torsional movement. So very good emulsification of the hard nuclear pieces. I am trying to show you all the pieces removal step by step so you can be with me as I emulsify each nuclear piece one by one. On the top right corner you can watch the CDE or the total dissipated energy moving. I have reached a level of 24.5 which is good for such a hard cataract. IOP is fixed at 60, aspiration flow rate peaks out at foot paddle 2 and the vacuum peaks out at foot paddle 2. I pick in one piece at a time, bring it in the center, emulsify it. And the whole process appears fairly effortless and a situation which is supposed to be a very complicated and a dreaded situation in phaco emulsification, a hard brown black cataract appears to be well within control in front of your eyes. After you hold each nuclear piece it is advisable that you break it up into further pieces and that makes the emulsification process faster with less fake energy consumed. All throughout the procedure, the chamber is rock stable and this is the confidence I get from the Centurion Gold FACO system with Active Sentry. Active Sentry means that the IOP sensor now is not in the FACO machine but in the FACO handpiece and therefore the changes in IOP are sensed much earlier, the response time is faster and the chamber is more stable. These are the settings for the epinucleus removal. The torsional values are less, the vacuum is less and the aspiration flow rate is less. The epinucleus is removed. The cortex is removed. The VVT toric IUL implanted under hydro insertion. We avoid visco because visco has some slippage properties of the IUL in the bag. 
the little visco there is removed from both under and over the eye well. The access marks brought into position verified with the help of the Varion digital access marker and a challenge overcome.